Hey everybody, welcome welcome back to Rachel Reads. My name is Rachel. I love to read and write Christian fiction and today I'm doing my favorite books of 2023. So let's get started. And the first book is actually non-fiction and it is my only non-fiction on the list but that is Part of My World by Jodi Benson. This is an autobiography and it just kind of tells her life and how Little Mermaid really changed her. Um, and it really talks about kind of her faith as well and how she's had to go through a lot and a lot of different like struggles with that but it was really a beautiful book and I really loved it and as a lover of The Little Mermaid um, I gave it five stars. I obviously loved it. First physical book to talk about is Authentically Izzy by Pedro Basham. This is Christian contemporary romance and is all about Izzy. It's an apostolary novel told mostly through emails and texts. It's just a really sweet story and yeah I really enjoyed it. There are some light Christian elements that I really enjoyed. Um, I think it's definitely a sweet book and yeah. The next book to talk about is The Lost Melody by Joanna Davidson Palatano. Um, this is Christian historical romance and this follows Vivian. She is this really great pianist except she is sent to an asylum for a certain reason you find out. Um, Celestia did a really good job explaining it so I would recommend checking out her recent reads where she talked about it because she also enjoyed it and I really love this book. Um, this is a little bit darker for Palatano. She doesn't always write as heavy books but this one in my opinion really isn't as heavy as a book like Jamie Jo Wright's. So I loved it. It's just a really sweet story. The next book to talk about is The Hidden Prince by Tessa Afshar. This is about Kieran and she is learning under Daniel. She is a Jewish scribe um, and she is very well trained along with some other boys and a few other students. But you kind of follow her journey as something happens when they're a little bit younger and she has to go away and you kind of just follow the journey of Kieran and Jared coming back together and then there's this really cool plot line about the hidden prince. If you know the historical part of Daniel or even just what's in the Bible, it's really cool to see the dots connect in this book. Sorry for any lighting changes. I am filming this during the sunset so it's just kind of really weird. I read The Wonderland Trials by Sarah Ella in the spring but I reread it before The Looking Glass Illusion came out so that is why I'm including them towards the beginning because I read this one first in like April I think. So yeah. Mm -hmm. These are Christian allegorical YA dystopian fantasy. I know that sounds like a lot but I do know a few other girls in here have really enjoyed them and give them like think four stars. So yeah I really enjoyed it. Um, it's really fun to see the allegory build up in this book leading to this book. And yeah you follow Alice Little and she is a normal. She has varying thoughts about being a normal. But you just kind of follow her journey and when something happens to her sister you just kind of see what happens as she explores Wonderland and so many different things. Book one definitely has more of like a Hunger Games vibe. I think this one kind of feels like Mockingjay a little bit just because it is the last book. But yeah I think they're really good. I love the allegory. Chess and Alice are amazing in my opinion so yeah. My next favorite I have to talk about is First Date by Kristen McGee. This is um, Christian YA Romance and this is such a sweet retelling. This is an Esther retelling which is my favorite story in the Old Testament so I really love following it. But this is about all about Addie who is on a reality TV show um, getting a prom date with the president's son and it does sound a little cheesy but the faith content in this book is really sweet and so is the romance and I just really love it. Um, next book I have to talk about is definitely one of the top tier books I read this year. I know Lindsay really enjoyed it and if you have not read this author I highly recommend. She does have a YA book but all of her books are really good and that is Mind the Gap by Erin Mangum. Y'all know I love Erin Mangum. She writes the sweetest books. This one is Christian Romance all about Kate who her life kind of falls apart all of a sudden so her grandmother invites her to go to London with her and you meet this British tour guide and yeah you just follow her faith journey as she learns to trust God and also just the romance part. Erin <sighs> Mangan really writes good Christian books that focus on the faith content and yeah I really appreciate that and these are some of my favorite books ever. Next book I have to talk about is Dangerous Beauty by Melissa Coslin. This is all about Liliana and this does deal with human trafficking but it is Christian and handled very well in my opinion. Um, it wasn't too heavy for me but I know some of y'all might be sensitive to that but you kind of follow her journey as she's rescued from it and 
there's another character called Merrick who helps her out of it and you just follow their story. Um, this is romantic suspense and it's Christian. There's some really great faith content. I love the suspense and action. Um, and there was a sweet romance. The next book I have to talk about is The Legendary Ing or Inge. I really don't know how to say this. I'm going to say Inga from now on. Hold me to it if I don't say Inga. <laughs> but this is The Legendary Inga by Kate Stradling. This is YA fantasy, but it's not, there is a little bit of magic, but it's not heavy on it at all. And I think it's very clean. There is a small romance, but it's not in the main plot because uh, this is a Beowulf retelling. So you're following this girl who accidentally kills this beast that no one else could kill and the delusional and I mean very delusional king um makes her his son and she's like that can't happen so yeah it's kind of all like thrown under the rug and you just follow her story it's very funny it has a great sibling plot so if you like siblings and like family I highly recommend that the next book I have to talk about is The Words We Lost by Nicole Deese. This is all about Ingrid and this is heavier on the grief side. So if you've experienced loss, I would look into it before reading it. But I think it was really well done and there was a great Christian theme of hope and faith in this book. And just, you know, move, not per se moving past it, but just hoping in the future. And I think that was really great to see that and truly really inspiring. So yeah. Um, mainly I love this cover. I think it's stunning, but the book inside is really great. The next book is actually a series and that is The Weddings by Bella by Janice Thompson. I really want to include Janice Thompson because this is my first time trying her out this year and I really loved it. I've only read the first three books, but I really love them. These are Christian romance and they have a lot of great faith content and a really sweet romance. So yeah, I know Lindsay loves Janice Thompson. Me and her can't convince you to read Janice Thompson, then I don't know what will because she writes just really fun, sweet books. The next book I had to talk about is A Name Unknown by Rosanna M. White. This is Christian historical romance. This is set during World War One or like just before it. He is a writer, but she does not know that and she is tasked with finding something against him. But you really just follow their story. It has really great faith content and that's what I loved about it. Next book I have to talk about is one I also absolutely love but that is The Story People by Heather Kaufman. This is all about Ben and Rosemary. Ben owns a bookshop inherited by his uncle. Rosemary um, comes back to this small town to help out her grandmother. And you were just following her as she helps her grandmother and then they, she runs into Ben and you just follow their story. It is so sweet. And there is a really good faith discussion and faith content throughout this book. Um, and the romance is really good. I really think this should be made into a movie. The next book I have to talk about is The Griffin Heist by James R. Hannibal. This is um, Christian suspense. Um, and this follows Talia. And she is assigned to this um, CIA desk called Other. And she is sent to Moldova to look into this guy. Um, and she thinks it's just gonna be a really quick trip, but it turns out to be more like a Mission Impossible story, mm -hmm. which is really good. And once you get past like 100 pages, the action picks up, the story picks up, the faith content really picks up, and it's really great. I love this book. I really want a copy. It should be made into a movie. That's all I'm gonna say. The next book I have to talk about is No One to Trust by Lynette Eason. I love this book so, so much. So this is all about Summer and Kyle, um, but you follow their story. Summer just wakes up to a gun in her face, accusing her husband of something, and you just kind of follow that journey. Don't let the beginning scare you, especially the gun in your face part. It's not that descriptive. Lynette Easton writes great faith, romance, suspense, and yeah. Next book I have to talk about is one I literally love so much, but that is The Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon Walwork. When I tell you I love this book, I could hear like the Nutcracker playing in my head as I read this. It is so musical and so Nutcrackery with hints of the Pied Piper. It's just so good. But this follows Clara. She is a pianist and she has her whole life planned out. Or does she? I'll leave you with that. Um, it is a Nutcracker slash Pied Piper retelling with a great musical plot line. <sighs> there is no fake content but I think if you wanted to you probably could see an allegory maybe. I don't currently remember that part but it's really clean, really sweet. It is such a good book. Next book is also a series and that is The Tales of Ambia by Alison Tebow. <sighs> when I tell you I love this series, I love this series. I know Lindsay and Celestria have read 
at least the first book, and I think Celestia's read the rest of the series, but the first book, The Reluctant Godfather, is a Cinderella retelling followed Burnley, who is a young, cantankerous godfather. Okay, that part, Burnley is hilarious. Like, cackling, giggling, hilarious. He is so sarcastic and cantankerous, but he's so great. I love this book. It definitely takes a good spin on Cinderella. And the next book is a Goose Girl retelling from a Bernie's perspective again. I also love this book. It is so good, so funny. It definitely has a little bit heavier, I think, than The Reluctant Godfather. And then the third book is Poppy's Peril. Um, this is a short novella from Poppy's perspective, who you meet in book two. And then the third book is A Flash of Magic. This is a collection of short stories that I love to death. Some of them are really good and really funny and I really love them. The last book I have to talk about is very exciting because it actually comes out this month but I received an art copy but that is Ari Audrey and the Legend of the Fire Rules by Christy A. Cole. This is um, YA fantasy um, and it's very clean. I know fantasy scares some people off. There is like a mention of an enchantress and there's some like mystical creatures and it's set in a different world but beyond that there's not like a lot of heavy magic because magic in this book is kind of like the magic in the legendary inga it is a tool to be used not a power or like something that's already in people it's kind of like a tool to be wielded but yeah this is a really sweet book it kind of feels like a melanie sellier book so sort of like very fairy tale ish but this is about ari audrey um, she is 16, I think. She was 12 in like the first few chapters and then she turned 16. Um, and you just follow her journey as she discovers more about her past and more of these odd things being brought up in her life. And yeah, it was really good. I do have a review on Goodreads that I think is like really well written, I guess. I hope it is anyway. But yeah, it's just such a sweet story. This book has really good Christian themes of forgiveness and faith and hope and just the truth. And it's really beautiful in that aspect because I feel like this is what Christian YA fantasy should be. And yeah, I really appreciated it because I think it's written how YA should be and that is presentable for our younger readers. And I really love that because it didn't feel too heavy for a YA book, which was beautiful to see. And yeah, I really just cannot talk about this book enough. Ari Audrey was really good because she was very moldable and she grew in this book which is great to see as were a lot of the characters in this book. So yeah I really cannot wait to continue this series whenever those books are planned because I love book one so much. So yeah that is all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below maybe a few of your favorite books of this year or some questions for my Q&A. I will answer almost any type of question. So yeah um that is all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope God blesses you today and goodbye.